Becoming a YouTuber has changed my perspective on a lot of things. I think the biggest is how I react to bad stuff. Because if something awful happens, if the absolute worst thing you can imagine happens to me, at the very least, I can turn it into a video. And really, the worse things are, the better the story. So when something in my life goes wrong, there's a tiny part of me that's like, yes! CONTENT! YouTube has turned me into the ultimate optimist, because now, even the darkest of clouds can have a silver lining. So strap in, because my idiot self just went camping with some friends, and so many things went wrong that if we don't make it into a video, I might actually die. New pants! Let's go! It was a beautiful day in Southern California. Like most YouTubers, I live in LA now. RIP Boise, you will be missed. And I had the bright idea to go camping. I should go camping with some friends, I said to myself, like a crazy person, and I called up some friends to see what they thought. Hmm, I don't know. I'm pretty busy, said Jordan, busily. Please, we'll have fun in the sun and sleep under the stars and make s'mores over a nice warm fire. It wouldn't be camping without s'mores. And, um, you need to be here at like 6 a.m., does that work? Hmm, okay, but do you promise it'll be super duper fun? Ha <laughs> ha, sure. Then I called Hazel and Alyssa and somehow made the outdoors sound like a pleasant change of pace for making videos instead of the Machiavellian hell world we were blissfully unaware of and that would soon consume our souls. They were down to clown, so I went to Target to get a tent, some water, and a jump on those concrete balls out front because I might be in my 20s, but I will never not climb on Target's balls. Now, there were a few things I didn't buy, and a few of those were even on purpose. Like, in my mind, we didn't need air mattresses. That would be too bougie. If we brought air mattresses, we might as well bring flat screen TVs. <laughs> Where would we plug them in? A tree? <laughs> also, I didn't think that I needed to drop a ton of money on a camping stove because I saw, like, one Bon Appetit video where Teen Heartthrob and, best YouTuber without a Twitter account, Brad Leone cooks a steak over a campfire and was like, yeah, I'm an expert. Thanks a lot, Brad. Just kidding, I love you. It turns out that an air mattress and proper cooking equipment are pretty important if your plan is to venture into the wilderness and, you know, survive. Like, you didn't even finish Boy Scouts, you absolute child. I didn't know where a good place to camp would be, so I just kinda picked one. Most of the time, I really agonize over decisions. You know, see the whole picture, cover all the angles. But for this trip, I kinda figured that a campsite was a campsite, and it didn't really matter where we went. Spoiler, I was wrong. So the day came and we headed up the mountain. The road was twisting and turning, and I kinda I started to feel sick, but I wasn't gonna let that get me down. We were camping! Further up the mountain, a cute little squirrel scampered out in front of us on that narrow gravel road. And I don't think he had ever seen a car before because he stood there in awe, as if this two-ton chunk of alien metal flying toward him was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. And I hope it was, because it was also the last thing he would ever see. <laughs> We got to the campsite and there were some trees, but none of them were really tall enough or positioned correctly to provide any useful shade. We unloaded all the food and realized that we forgot the marshmallows, and the graham crackers, and the chocolate, so we couldn't make s'mores, but I wasn't gonna let that get me down. We were camping! We sat around for a bit and played some games, got some sun, talked about our feelings, got some more sun, we forgot the sunscreen. Who wants burgers? I pulled out the firewood and started to make a fire, but we didn't have any lighter fluid and I thought that we didn't need an axe because the firewood was pre-cut, right? Wrong. You need, I mean, okay, clearly I'm not an expert, but I think it would have been easier to get going if some of the pieces were smaller and covered in lighter fluid. Or gasoline. Anyway, I saw this thing about how chips are flammable, so the minute I realized our big bag of chips could be used as kindling, I took it away from everyone. No eat. Only burn. But apparently, bridges are the only thing I'm capable of burning because despite my best efforts, the fire was a ridiculously smoky mess that nobody could get cozy comfortable next to without being blinded by a jet stream of ash and despair. We tried to cook burgers over the fire, and like, a couple of them didn't taste too bad, but it had taken so long to get things going that everyone was pretty absurdly hungry, so I think literally anything would have seemed appetizing at that point. Even half-cooked burgers that made Hazel get sick and throw up. But none of that could get us down, because we were... Camping. During the day, the surface temperature of Mars can reach 20 degrees Celsius or about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If not for the thin, nearly oxygenless atmosphere, we Earthlings might consider it comfortable. But during the Martian night, which is only slightly longer than our own, temperatures plunge to minus 153 degrees Celsius. Far too cold for life as we know it to survive. The sun went down at the campsite, and I gotta tell ya, I would rather have slept on Mars. Jordan 
Jordan had long since set up shop in the Jeep and was somewhat spared from the horrors that were about to befall the rest of us. Hazel was up through the night, sick as ever. Alyssa's extremities were so cold that she had to pretend her feet didn't exist to deal with the pain. Everybody was sunburnt, and to top it all off, the ground was so bumpy and sharp that it, like... <laughs> It really hurt my back. We went to bed early to try and just end it all as quickly as possible, but you can only sleep so much. We woke up well before sunrise and found it impossible to fall back asleep, so we broke down the tents and packed everything up in the horrible frozen darkness. I don't think we left anything behind, but even if my fingers had fallen off, I wouldn't have noticed or honestly even cared. Despite all of that, I still had a lot of fun hanging out with my friends. It definitely wasn't worth it, but hey, at least we got a video out of it. Rest in peace, Squirrelston. You will be missed. I really hope you liked this video, because if you didn't, Squirrelston died in vain. I don't make the rules. So hit that subscribe button. It'll make all of your wildest dreams come true. Assuming you dream about more Tim Tom videos. And when you're done with that, go check out Jordan's newest animation. It's incredibly well done, and after that horrible camping trip, he deserves the views.